Hi guys, and welcome back to the Oracle Data Guard course. In this lecture, I will cover the Active Data Guard subject. In this lecture, you will learn how to do the following. Describe the Active Data Guard and its advantages. Enable Active Data Guard and use real-time query. Configure Apply Lag Tolerance. Configure zero lag between the primary database and the standby database. Force redo apply synchronization in a real time query environment. Active Data Guard option is applicable only on physical standby databases. But what does Active Data Guard mean in first place? As you know, a physical standby database can be opened for read only operations. If you allow the redo apply to be active while the standby database is opened, then the active data guard is considered to be enabled. In other words, when you enable the active data guard, the queries in the standby database will return results that are identical to what would be returned from the primary database. This capability is known as the real time query feature. Unfortunately, to enable this feature, you must purchase a separate license. Without Active Data Guard license, if you want to allow access to the physical standby database for read-only operations, you must stop the redo apply first. I think the advantage of using Active Data Guard is obvious. You will receive up-to-date data in the standby database. If you want to open a physical standby database for read-only operations, you must stop the redo apply if it was running. Then you open the database. If you have the Active Data Guard license, you can after that start the redo apply services. If the physical standby database is down, you can just start up the database. If you want to know whether the database is mounted or opened, query the open mode colon from v$ sign database view. If a physical standby database is open for read only operations, you can perform the following operations. Execute select statements. Run PL SQL procedures and functions that do not change the data. Use database links. Set role. Alter session and alter system. DML statements against global temporary tables. This last capability is very useful because it allows reporting tools to create their own temporary objects in the standby database. When the physical standby database is open, you cannot perform the following operations. DML statements, DDL statements on objects, access of local sequences, DML statements on local temporary tables. In a real-time query environment, you can use the V$ sign data guard stats view to obtain the current apply lag, as shown in the slide. The history of the apply lag can be obtained from the V$ sign standby event histogram view, as shown in the select statement in the slide. When a physical standby database is running in a real-time query mode, sometimes the normal users want to make sure that the results they obtain from their queries in the standby database are within some specific lag tolerance. Standby max data delay session parameter is used to guarantee that the results of queries run on the standby database return to the client only if the lag is less than the specified value. This parameter can take one of the following values. None, and this is the default value. 
When the parameter takes this value, the queries will be executed regardless of the apply lag. You can give the parameter a non-zero value. In this case, the queries will be executed only if the apply lag is less than or equal to the given value in seconds. If you assign zero to this parameter, the queries are guaranteed to return the exact same result as if they were issued on the primary database. Standby max data delay parameter cannot be set by sys user. If you try it, you will receive aura 03174 error. If the standby database cannot serve the specified apply lag tolerance, it will return aura 03172 error to the user. In a real-time query environment, if a session wants to force the standby database to apply all the received redo, it should issue the following command. Alter session sync with the primary. If the synchronization cannot be done because the apply services are off, the statement will return an error message. This statement requires the transport services to be using the sync mode. The example in the slide is showing a trigger that will fire when a specific user logs on to a standby database. This trigger will make sure that the user's session is in sync with the primary database when it logs on. As it is shown in the slide, the trigger is using altered session sync with the primary statement to achieve the task. This is one of the awesome improvements that were introduced in Oracle DataGuard version 12c. You can execute DML operations against global temporary table. Undo generated from DML operations on a global temporary table is stored in temporary table space, not in undo table space. This is how Oracle made it possible for the normal user sessions to change the data in the global temporary tables. Of course, this also means that the storage needed by the changes will be taken from the temporary table space, not the undo table space. On the other hand, normal users cannot execute DDL operations on the global temporary tables in the standby database. DDL statements must be issued on the primary database. This feature is not enabled by default. To enable it, set the parameter temp undo enabled to true in the primary database. I have talked in this lecture about one of the best capabilities in the Oracle Data Guard. That is the Active Data Guard. Normal users can get up-to-date reports data from the standby databases. By completing this lecture, you should have learned how to do the following. Describe the Active Data Guard and its advantages. Enable Active Data Guard and use real-time query. Configure Apply Lag Tolerance. Configure Zero Lag between the primary and standby databases. And force Redo Apply Synchronization in a real-time query environment. In the next lecture, I will explain about another fantastic feature in the Oracle Data Guard. That is creating the snapshot standby database. Thanks for staying with me. See you in the next lecture.